Today we're going to be showing you how to install the Dexter trailer axle with idler hubs. This offers the easy lube configuration and measures 72 inches long. It also offers a 2200 pound capacity. It's going to come with the four on four bolt pattern hubs. Part number is 20440-EZ-72. Now to ensure that this axle is going to be the right one for your application, you need to make two measurements. One is going to be from the center of the spring to the center of the spring on the other side. This axle offers 58 inches from spring center to spring center. The next measurement is going to be what they call the hub face to the hub face. So it's going to be from one side to the other. It's going to be wherever your hub naturally sits. You want to measure from the point that the rim makes contact to the hub. So we measure from here to the same spot on the other side. And what you're looking for there is 72 inches. So we've got a 72, 58 axle. 72 inches hub face to hub face, 58 spring center to spring center. Now to install the spring on your axle, we're gonna use U-bolts to connect it so our spring's gonna fit around the underside. We'll have a plate to go underneath and two U-bolts to hold it. Now we recommend using a new U-bolt kit. The larger hole in the middle is gonna accept that small tab that sticks off there. The top portion of the bolt fits right into the bottom. A spring perch there. Bring that through, and then we'll just take the provided nuts. We'll snug these down once we have our axle in position and we know that it's hanging the way we want it. Now we can get our axle put up in position once we have that done on each end. You'll see here on the back side is going to be the area the slipper portion will slide into, and then we'll rotate it up into position and we'll use our bolt here in the front. So we just want to rotate that up into position. And once we align our hole, we can slide through our bolt. You can see that's gonna fit right through that bracket up here on the spring eye. We'll go through our bracket, through the spring eye, come out on the inside. Just wanna keep in mind, you do want a little bit of movement. You don't wanna squeeze that bracket down so tight that it's pulled against the side of the springs. You want those to be able to move a little bit. Now on the back side of the bolt, right there at the head, you'll see the splines that are on it. Those are designed to engage the bracket and keep our bolt from turning. So you don't want to turn the bolt side. We're going to tighten this down using the nut side only. Now once the spring eye bolts are in place, just want to kind of tap your axle and make sure that your U-bolts are sitting straight up and down, and we'll start to tighten these down evenly. Now we're going to go to each one and we're going to begin to torque them down. Now typically what you're looking for is torque to yield, is what they call, so we're going to torque these just until we see our, our plate start to deform just slightly. That'll give us the proper tension on those U-bolts so we won't have to worry about them backing off. Now whether you've just got the replacement beam or the kit, you're gonna have to assemble your bearings, your hubs, everything, get it put in. Now the hub kit is going to of course have our hub you see it's got black powder coat finish on it. it. Has our four studs. Now these are on a four on four bolt pattern, which is gonna be very, very common. Inside you'll see the races, the bearings are gonna run on. It's really nice to get a full replacement kit when you do replace axles, just because you're starting right back from scratch. So everything's gonna be brand new and fresh. It's gonna come with an inner and outer bearing for each side. Of course, you'll have new lug nuts. You're gonna have the new dust cap with the removable plug that allows you to get into the easy lube grease dirt and we've got the bushing the nut and the keeper that kind of holds all that in place and keeps it from backing out while on the end of the hub so this really gives you an excellent way to get everything replaced 
And then once you have your bearing in the back side of your hub, you've got the new seal. That's gonna keep all the grease inside and not let it seep out. Now we're just gonna use some regular red style high temp grease. It's important to use high temp grease. You don't wanna use like a universal or anything like that just because as fast as this is gonna be turning, it builds up a lot of heat. But we'll take one of our bearings. They're both gonna be the same. And then you can use a bearing packer. There are a few different methods for packing bearings, but these being as small as they are, it won't take long. Just get a glove on your hand and you just kinda work it in that crack between the inner and outer portion. And as you do that, it's gonna come out of the top. Right up in this area. Just wanna make sure you do that all the way around. But once we've got that coming out all the way around the top edge here, We'll call that one packed. That's going to go right into the back side of our hub. And we'll show you how to put that seal in now. Now to get our seal in place, we're going to be using a seal driver. This is part number PTW83020. Just gives you a nice flat surface. It's pretty easy to work with. If you don't have a seal driver around or if you don't want to make the investment in it, you could also Instead of placing my seal driver on the top, you could also use like a block of wood. So you're just gonna place it on there, begin to tap it down in place. You wanna get it started all the way around. Once you've got it started all the way around, just drive it home evenly. like that. Now inside the hub you can see just a little recess area. I like to take a wad of grease and get it inside there all the way around. It'll just save you some time with the grease gun filling it up later. Now we're gonna slide that on. Place in our outer bearing, taper side in. Then we can slide on the bushing, and that's going to match the flat portion on the spindle there. Now it's time to thread on our nut. You see we've got free play there. We're going to make sure that we compress our bearings in there well. There's some slip joint pliers. You'll feel that kind of tighten up a little bit. We don't want it to be overly tight, so we'll back that off just a little bit. We feel the proper tension, then it's time to slide on the keeper. Now this is going to go right over the nut. You can see the little tab that sticks in. That's going to go in between the flat spot and the nut. So that is going to slide in that little slot right there. Now we'll use the grease gun. We're just gonna fill till we see grease starting to come out around the outside of our bearings there. All right, now we just wanna place our cap on. I'm gonna begin to tap it in place. Just kinda like we did with the seal. You wanna make sure you get it started all the way around, then you can put it in the rest of the way. That little lip should go right up against the outside of the hub, and you'll place your rubber cap in. You see that's going to cover our grease cirque there, It'll keep any moisture or debris from getting in there and causing us any trouble. Now at that point, you can put your tire back on, torque down your lug nuts properly, you'll be ready to hit the road. You remove this cap, Inspect the grease inside, and when needed, add a little bit more. Okay, that's going to complete our installation of the Dexter trailer axle with idler hubs, offering the easy lube spindles, four-on-four four bolt pattern hub at 72 inches long.